Hey there, fellow expeditionists. I've had a few subscribers ask us about how we go about boondocking on our road trips. Since we like to just take off with no reservations and find places to stay typically in our vehicle along the way. Let's start with explaining what we mean by boondocking. You may have also heard me refer to it as stealth camping or dispersed camping, but it's all boondocking. Just depends on where you're doing it at. Boondocking is simply camping or spending the night in a spot that is off the grid. No amenities or hookups, no official campgrounds, etc. It is a term most often used among RVers, people traveling in RVs looking for free places to park their rig for the night. Now, I don't have an RV and I probably never will, but boondocking is also popular among those living the van life and there's even a segment called SUV RVing, which is closer to the category that we would fall into. But there's really no need for any of that to be able to boondock. People do it in trucks, cars, with rooftop tents, truck campers. There's no right or wrong way. Catfish and I got interested in it back in 2017. We had gone on a little road trip to Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area in Tennessee we ended up cutting our backpacking trip a day short due to the extensive heat at the time, but we weren't ready to go home. So on our way to another destination, we stopped at a rest area along the interstate and simply slept in the car for the night. It was then that it dawned on us that we could do much longer road trips, just the two of us, if we could simply find places along our route to park for the night. That was when we started planning our three week, 7,000 mile trip out to the west coast that we did in 2018. That trip was a huge learning experience in so many ways, but especially in the art of boondocking. You see, here in Indiana, options for boondocking are extremely limited. But out west, holy cow, there is so much public land out there. We spent nights in rest areas, truck stops, on BLM land, or Bureau of Land Management, as well as multiple national forests. We have continued that kind of boondocking on all of our road trips since then to the Badlands and Black Hills of South Dakota, our two week trip to Colorado, and even last year to the Great Smoky Mountains, as well as our Northeast trip to the Adirondacks. So how do we do it? First, our vehicle has to be able to carry all the supplies we need for our trip while still having room to sleep in the vehicle. Now, if you have an RV or a van or a truck topper or that kind of thing, it's a pretty easy task. For us, it's been a little more complicated as we've done it both in an SUV as well as a small Subaru. We have a cargo box on top of our vehicle to keep all of our main supplies, including our clothes, backpacks, camping supplies, and other odds and ends. Inside our vehicle, we have two small coolers that fit in the floor of the back seat, as well as a tote full of food and a three inch foam mattress that easily rolls up when not being used. Now, when we boondocked in the SUV, which was a Subaru Ascent, I had actually built a raised frame that we slept on and stored supplies underneath it. So that takes care of space inside the vehicle. And let me tell you, with each trip we've taken, we have found ways to reduce things we take. Because we have a tendency to overpack, but we're slowly getting down to just the absolute basics. Alright, next thing is privacy. It doesn't matter if I'm in a rest area or in a pull off along a forest road. I don't want bright lights shining in on me from passing vehicles, or even the random passerby looking in my vehicle while I'm trying to sleep. On that first big three week trip back in 2018, I used blackout curtains that attached to the windows with suction cups. That did okay, but I wanted better. So I ended up buying a huge roll of Reflectix from Home Depot, and then made exact cutouts for every window in my vehicle. This is by far the most superior way to keep privacy inside your vehicle. No lights in, no lights out, nobody can tell anybody is inside your car. This has been especially helpful a couple of times when we have arrived after dark and simply parked in a trailhead parking with plans to hike that trail first thing in the morning. Now there is the issue of ventilation when sleeping inside your vehicle. You'll have plenty of air to breathe obviously, but in the morning, your windows will be extremely fogged up from all the condensation we create from breathing. So we typically crack a couple of windows open to reduce condensation. And we even have car window screens that pull over the door so that no bugs can get in while the windows are cracked. Now, if we're out somewhere with plenty of privacy, such as BLM land or a national forest, 
We also have a Napier Sports Cove tent attachment that attaches around the opened rear hatch of our vehicle, which gives excellent ventilation, protects from rain, and even allows a view. We have been known to go ahead and pitch a tent if we're in a national forest or on BLM land, but if we're in a hurry to leave in the morning, we'll skip the tent and just sleep in the vehicle. So that covers our vehicular needs while boondocking. Let's talk real quick about all the places you can boondock and how to find them. I have personally used several apps to find places, usually bookmarking multiple options before ever leaving. My favorites are freecampsites.net and iOverlander. And I've used Truck Parking USA just to find places that truck drivers and RVers will sometimes use when nothing else is available. That often includes truck stops, Walmarts, Cabela's, even Cracker Barrels that allow overnight parking. Our preference, of course, is somewhere out in nature, as you can often find free spots for dispersed camping in national forests or BLM land, but it all depends on where you're at. There are many other popular websites and apps out there to help find just about any kind of free boondocking you require. Just remember that some areas have almost nothing available, especially here in the east and down south, and that's when you might have to go into stealth mode, as I like to call it. Don't be afraid to go to that Walmart or Cracker Barrel. Just be nice and go inside and ask to be sure they allow overnight parking. Here, let me give you a real quick overview of the couple of apps that we use. Both freecampsites.net and iOverlander are web-based apps that work the same on your computer or on your mobile device. All the info it contains is user-added information, as in fellow users of the app mark on the map the places that they have boondocked. You can zoom in on the map, see what's available, and click on each entry to get more information, whether it's a true dispersed camping area, how many sites are in the area, and any other information the user may have included. Be mindful of details on road conditions, as some dispersed camping areas may require all-wheel drive or high ground clearance. Often, there are also bookmarks for actual campgrounds, rest areas, or truck stops. These are simply two apps that have worked out for me so far, but there are many others, including the very popular Campendium, though it requires a paid membership to use, and you know me, I like free. Also, if you are planning ahead and looking for dispersed camping in national forests or on BLM land, look up the website for that public land and know the rules for that area. Oftentimes, they will include maps for dispersed camping areas right there on their website. It's best to be prepared with multiple options when you can. Now, there are two questions I get asked most often about boondocking the way we do. The first is, what if you have to use the restroom? And that, of course, depends on where you're boondocking. The answer is pretty simple if you're spending the night in a spot that has 24-hour service nearby, such as rest areas or truck stops or even Walmarts. But when we're out in nature, such as BLM land or national forests, we can either do as we do when we're backpacking. That is, find a private spot, dig a cat hole, and do your best to leave no trace. The other is, we do have a small foldable porta potty that we put inside a pop-up tent that we have used when in dispersed campsites when other campers are around. A little planning ahead goes a long way. The second question we hear a lot is, how do we shower? There are options. Typically, private campgrounds will charge a small fee to non-campers for use of their shower facilities. Some national parks also have pay showers. Truck stops and travel centers also have pay showers. And if you have a gym membership to somewhere like, say, Planet Fitness, you can go to any of their locations for a shower as well. It's not unusual for us to go for multiple days on our trips between showers. We've done wet white baths, jumped in creeks and waterfalls. We are outdoors people, so a little dirt doesn't kill us. But there are always options. Of course, on some of our longer trips, we have spent at least one night in either a proper campground or even a night in a motel just to get a decent night's rest and a good shower. We're not completely animals, even though sometimes I'm sure we smell like it. So in the past five years, we have boondocked in national forests, BLM land, on boat piers, in truck stops, rest areas, at trailheads, literally on the side of the road by a river. So far, we've never been asked to move, no police knocking on our windows, no troubles in general. Being able to travel this way has allowed us to go on more adventures, 
keep our expenses down, and just do things that a few years ago I never thought I'd get to experience. Moondocking is not for everyone, but for me, even if I had the means to travel in other ways, I think I'd still prefer taking off with no reservations. It's part of the adventure now. Someday, I might be that guy living in a van down by the river. And on that note, be sure to leave us a comment, click the thumbs up button, and subscribe. Till next time, peace out.